So we want to talk about the difference between the common logarithm and the natural logarithm. Both are used extensively in the real world and they lead to the two different buttons that you see on your graphing calculator that we're going to be talking about here in just a moment. So here's what you need to know about the common logarithm. The common logarithm is whenever we write log just by itself without explicitly writing the base. And so this means they were talking about log with a base 10. And the common log is used all over the place. Um, there are a lot of measurements that we talk about in the real world that are based off of powers of 10. For example, the, the Richter scale, you know, the how powerful an earthquake is. Um, if you go from a magnitude of 2 to a magnitude of 4, that's not twice as powerful. That's 100 times powerful. Every whole unit that you move up on the Richter scale is by a power of 10 because it's built off of a logarithmic scale. Uh, same thing when you talk about pH balance. You know, how acidic or how alkaline is something is based on the concentration of, of certain ions in the, in the substance. And it's all based off of um, logarithms, log base 10. Uh, even decibel, you know, how loud does something sound? It's based off of uh, powers of 10 and it's on a logarithmic scale. So it's good to know that stuff. Then you've got the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm looks like this. Now, I don't know why, but I always do it at cursive, ln. I think I do that so that the L that I draw does not get confused for a one or anything else. I wanna make sure that what I write is very clear for you guys. So this means log base E of x. So natural log means log base C. And if you ever forget which one is which, you know, maybe you just have one of those rough days, look on your calculator. So you'll notice that you've got your log and your natural log buttons right here. So the log button just above that as a secondary feature is 10 to the x. So you know that those guys are connected. Log is base 10. And above natural log is E. So natural log is log base e. A lot of the buttons have those corresponding inverses to them just like the square and the square root are connected. So if you ever forget, just look on your calculator. So let's try to work through a few examples using common log and natural log without a calculator and then some with a calculator. If you are asked to find the log of 10,000 understand what this means. This means it's understood to have a base of 10. And so if it's base 10, you gotta think, okay, what's the power of 10 that gives me 10,000, right? Uh, let's start off like this. What's the power of 10 that gives you 10? Well, that's one. How do you get 100? Well, you'd have to square 10, right? How do you get 1,000? You would have to do 10 to the third and then 10 to the fourth, and so on. So when you have a number like 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever, and it's inside of a log, you just need to count the zeros. So here we have four zeros, and that's my answer. That's it, nothing else to worry about. If I were to do the natural log of e to the seventh, okay. Well, understand that this means log base e of e to the seventh, okay? Now, we're gonna get into this a, a little bit later in, in the next video, but um, think about this. e to some power has to equal that. So if you were to write an exponential equation, this e raised to some power has to equal what's inside the logarithm, which is e to the seventh. So I hope that you can see that the answer here has to be seven, right? Because these bases would be the same, that means x equals seven if you were solving that exponential equation. And so something we're gonna see in the next video is that if these bases are the same, if the base of the log is the same as the base of the expression inside, the answer is just the power, all right? Let's try the log of 
the fraction one over one million. All right, so we've talked a lot about how we work with logarithms, right? And we've said, if I do this, right, let's see what that log would be. Uh, log base 10 of a million. In the example up here, I said count the zeros. So you had four zeros, so the answer was four. Here I have six zeros. So we, we're going to write six. But since it's in the denominator, we know that the only way it gets in the denominator is because it has a negative power. So that's the power of 10 that gives you 1 over 1 million. All right? So 10 to the 6th is a million. 10 to the negative 6th is 1 over a million. Okay? So let me make sure we write that we understand. If I say 10 to the 6th, that's a million. Which means that 10 to the negative six, we just take that and put it underneath one. So make sure you know how to work with these powers so you can make very quick work of these problems. All right, natural log of e to the 4,300 ninth power. Well, you're gonna see that's very much like the last problem that we did up here where I could rewrite this and say log base e of e to the 4309th power. Okay. So what power of e gives you e to the 4309? Well, you guessed it. 4309. Now what I think is really fun is to see who is paying attention. Who watches the videos? Who listens to me? Because I know that I'm going to have people who will see problems like this on an assessment and just say, I'm just going to use my calculator, right? Because you can come up here and you can just do log of 10,000 and you get 4, right? You can do natural log of e raised to the 7th and you get 7, right? So easy. Well, let's see what happens if you type in natural log of e raised to the 4309th power. Let's see what it tells me. It gives me an overflow error. And the reason it gives you an error is because what the calculator is trying to do, because the calculator isn't really using these properties of logarithms, the calculator is doing e raised to that power. But that goes beyond the capabilities of this graphing calculator, so it freaks out. So I think it's pretty cool that we can do a problem that our calculator by default can't do. Because see, it's trying to do it in a different way. But we can use properties of logarithms, and we can understand that since these bases are the same, the answer is just the power. So, yay, we're smart. Now for these next pieces, these next problems, I want us to use the calculator because we need to, and I want us to round round answers to the nearest thousandth. Sometimes in my math lab they're going to say round to four decimal places. Uh, whatever they say is what you do. So make sure that you read correctly and that you round correctly. Right? Alright, so let's see what our calculator says about this. Log of 45.3. You've got to make sure that you're using the correct button on your calculator. So this is log. That's this one. Don't use this one. You want to say log, and you're just going to type in 45.3. So there are some questions in your homework where it's just put it in your calculator, hit enter, and then round correctly. So here I need to round to the nearest thousandth. So that's going to be to the third decimal point. Uh, the next number after that is zero, so it doesn't change anything. So that's one. 1.656 and that's exactly what you would do uh, in my math lab. Uh, the next example we have is the natural log of 600 
and again you're just going to type it into the calculator that's all you really can do all right so i gotta make sure i type the right button though so it's the natural log of 600 so ln 600 and i come up with all right so round to the nearest thousandth this that's where the six is just to the left of it is the nine so i've got to bump it up one so that's 6.397 6.39, so here we go. And we could do stuff like this all day long, just put random numbers in there, and some of the homeworks that you have will ask you to do that. Evaluate natural log of this, evaluate log of this number. And so, that's all you do.